This is a message to men of different ages. If you're married and you have a wife, or maybe you have multiple wives, depending on where you live and what the law allows you to do, it is important that you protect your wives. In so doing, you protect stability for your wife and children. I know multiple examples of families who have been torn apart um, by, I would call it greed from the in-laws. When a man dies, people start to look at the wife as a person who is in the way of them um, getting or acquiring his assets. In the United States where I live, I believe that the wife is the next of kin. And if something happens to the husband or the wife, then the other partner is pretty much um, the next of kin and is the one who um, benefits and takes over control of their estate. The laws are obviously different in other countries and I'm not really sure exactly um, the specifics of what estates in some places, but I think men need to protect their wives and their children from greedy in-laws who are waiting to come in and take over their estate, throw out their families, throw out their wives and children, even out of the homes that they live in. This has been going on for many years and continues to happen. And I think it is a topic that needs to be addressed. Men, protect your wife and children. Make sure that if you are not here, that their stability is not put at stake. There are obviously things that you can do, measures you can take to ensure that their stability is a priority and that they are protected from others who are waiting to come in and take advantage because you're no longer there. I'm gonna tell you a story of a man who was married to his wife for over 30 years. Um, they were together and he got sick and she took care of him. And unfortunately, he passed away. Sure enough, a lot of people don't die when their loved ones are around. They'll wait for you to go run an errand or something. And then when you get back, they're gone. So this woman had gone to run an errand. And when she came back to the hospital, the hospital room was empty and she was confused. She ran outside and asked where her husband was and even the nurses and the doctors didn't know how to tell her that her husband had passed away. Eventually they told her that he had and she collapsed to the floor and was crying and wailing. They comforted her. Um, he had been taken to the morgue. So she makes arrangements, um, had his body wrapped up in sheets. And she had another person with her who was driving. She sat in the back of the car and supported and held his body wrapped in sheets and drove about two or so hours to the city where they lived. They lived in another city, but had to go to a hospital in another part um, of the area that they lived in because it was a better hospital to manage the condition that he had. So she arrives at the city where they lived at and she um, had him put at the mortuary. 
So she gets home and guess what happens? A group of sister-in-laws pull her out of the living room where she was sitting into another room where, of course, prior to her coming in, they had discussed what was going to transpire. And they were like, you've killed him, right? You finally killed him. So imagine a woman who has just lost her husband of 30 plus years. She's grieving. She's sad. She doesn't know how she's going to move on with life without a husband. Of course, it was unexpected. And she's in deep, deep grief. And the sisters-in-law have no sympathy for her. They come at her, they attack her, and accuse her of killing her husband as if she was going to benefit one way or another from him not being there. Anyway, so she had the courage to, to, to turn to each one of them and said, and sure enough, while he was sick, he was in the hospital for weeks. None of them had made time to go to the hospital to see him. So she started asking them one by one, did I see you at the hospital? You, were you at the hospital? You, were you at the hospital? She went all around the room and asked every single one of them if they had come to the hospital. And sure enough, they had nothing to say. She closed the door and walked out and that was the end of that. But imagine that a woman has lost a husband of so many years, father of her children, the person who's made sure that the family was taken care of financially, the person who she has been there for, to help care for, the person whose bedside she has been at relentlessly helping, hoping, praying for him to get better. And he finally die, dies. And then people come at her with accusations of, you've killed him, right? Very insensitive. But this is the reality of some women who lose their husbands. And this is just one part of how widows are treated poorly by their in-laws. And by the way, that is a story of my dad and mom. I have heard other stories very similar where a man dies and then people show up and accuse you of killing the man and show no sympathy. They're not there to comfort you, but to point fingers at you and to accuse you of something you didn't do in a time when you're, when you're deeply grieving the loss of your spouse. This needs to stop. People need to stop taking advantage of widows because their husbands are no longer there to stand up for them. But husbands need to put things in writing that will protect their wife and children. My dad, in his will, had administrators. And I wondered, over the years I have wondered why there was a need for him to have administrators of the will when he was legally married to my mother. They were together for years and years and years and um, I don't see why a person would feel the need to get other people involved in his will. My mom did not even have access to a copy of my dad's will after it was read. She had to go to court to fight to get a copy. What does the law say? The wife's rights are after her husband dies. As human beings, do we need to be more compassionate towards women who have lost 
their loved ones. As humans, we need to keep greed out of these situations, which leads to harassment of women who are grieving the loss of their spouses. I know of other cases where even after the person dies, the in-laws come in and try to kick out the wife and children from the home that they lived in because it's considered to be a home that was built by, say, their brother. Men who provided for their families and were financially stable pass on and now their wives are kicked out of the home. Their children are kicked out of the home. No arrangements were made for the children's school fees and tuition to be paid if something happens. Now these kids have to go from uncle to uncle and aunt to aunt and beg for them to help them with, with their school fees. Be sure to write out instructions and put money away to ensure that your family is safe and that they can maintain their home that they live in and not get kicked out by greedy in-laws if something happens to them or if something happens to you. This goes to the husband because it's happening. It's been going on for years and years and it continues to happen and it needs to stop. Some women don't have an education and don't have the ability to speak up or stand up for themselves. Some women don't know their rights. And so it puts them in positions where when these things happen, they get kicked out of their homes, they lose their stability, their standard of living plummets, they have to go begging for other people to show mercy to them, to either provide a home for them or to provide them with resources in order for them to rent a place for their children. Meanwhile, there's an in-law who has moved out of their home and is now living in the home that they lived in when their husband was alive. This has to stop. Men need to protect their wives and prevent these things from happening. After my dad died, a person came to, to our home and told my mom they wanted to do an inventory, an inventory of everything that was in the house. How do you go do an inventory of things that are in a home? In a home where a couple who have been married for 30 something years have lived. How do you know who purchased what? And even if the husband purchased it, that is his family home. He dies and someone wants to come in and take an inventory for what? This is really sad and it needs to stop. The sad thing with this is it continues. And even just recently, I know of a family friend whose father died and the brother walks in the house with a letter telling the wife of the husband of 30 plus years that she needs to move out of the home. How does that happen? The audacity that people have, what makes them so entitled? And these are men who have lived through experiences where these things have happened to people they know, to friends of theirs, and they have plenty of time to do things differently. They have plenty of times to make sure that their families were protected. They had plenty of time to ensure that the safety and stability 
of their wife and children was ensured. When you fail to write a will that protects your wife and children, then you're pretty much throwing them to the dogs. Because after you die, all the greedy folks who feel entitled to what you have are going to come in and do whatever they want. Is this the life you want your children and, and wife to experience after you're gone? This is a family that you love. This is the family that you chose. These are children that you brought into this world. They deserve better. This needs to stop. In-laws need to stop harassing widows after their husbands have died. Does the law protect them? And what if they don't know their rights? What are you as the husband doing to make sure that these things don't happen to them? Until we start doing things differently, these unfortunate incidences will continue to happen. So we must change how we view family. A man leaves his family, a woman leaves her family, they come together to start a new family. That is a new family unit. So when you die, I don't see how your brothers and sisters and other relatives have a right to come in and disrupt everything you've worked for. They come in and try to grab your assets from your family, from your wife and children. How is that possible? How is that okay? And what are you doing to make sure these things don't happen? Because if you don't act accordingly, these things will continue to happen. So do your part. Ensure that you have a will in place that has everything spelled out that protects your wife and children in order for the wolves not to come in and throw them out of your house in order for the wolves not to come in and try to take your assets, in order for the wolves not to come in and clear out all the money from your bank accounts. We have to be proactive. Put things in place that protect your family before something happens to you. Because if you don't, this is what happens. You're gone, your family's left to suffer, your kids are not able to get an education, they may not have a home, the life that they knew is gone and will never be, sa be the same because you chose not to take the right steps to put things in place to protect your family, the family that you picked, the family that you chose, the family that you made. If you have experienced this, I would like to hear in the comments what your experience was. I know a lot of families have gone through this and continue to go through it. We as a people need to change and stop being so greedy and stop being so heartless towards other people. If you have any questions or comments or like the content of this video, don't hesitate to hit the like button don't hesitate to comment. Don't hesitate to subscribe. Do not hesitate to share this video with others. Until next time, take care.